Welcome back to Plug Life Television. There's been a fair bit of debate recently about self-charging hybrids. Are they any different to the kind of Prius-style hybrids that we've become accustomed to over the last 20 years or so? Are they even a thing? Of course, the answer to the question, is there such a thing as a self-charging hybrid, is yes. No. I mean, mm, yes. No. I mean, wait, wait, hang on. It really depends on how you define a self-charging hybrid. The first definition could be considered as a vehicle that charges its traction battery from an onboard energy source. With this in mind, let's first look at the standard hybrid, such as the original Toyota Prius or Honda Insight, which is a hybrid of a petrol car and an electric car, with the electric car's charging socket removed. It has a petrol engine, and a fuel tank, and also has a small electric motor and a battery. As previously mentioned, there is no option to plug this car in. Next up is the plug-in hybrid, which is again a hybrid of a petrol and an electric car, but this time with the electric car's charging socket retained. This means that unlike a standard hybrid, it can be plugged in. Its electric motor and battery are typically bigger than those found in standard hybrids. Finally, we have the electric vehicle, which has a much larger motor and battery than a plug-in hybrid, and no petrol engine or fuel tank. It goes without say that electric vehicles can be plugged in. Let's look at the charging options for these vehicles. First up is the standard hybrid. The car recharges its traction battery using the petrol engine as an onboard generator. It also recharges the battery using regenerative braking, where the motor works in reverse to convert kinetic energy to electrical energy under braking, which is then stored in the battery, rather than using mechanical brakes to waste the kinetic energy as heat to slow the car down. Since a standard hybrid has no charging socket, it cannot make use of charge points, or even a domestic power socket. The plug-in hybrid also uses the special engine to charge the battery as well as using regenerative braking. Since it has a charging socket, it also has the option to make use of a public charge point, for less reliance on petrol. Finally, the electric vehicle makes excellent use of regenerative braking, since it has a large battery that can quickly absorb lots of energy under braking. It is primarily charged off of a charge point, and, unlike most plug-in hybrids, it also has the option to use a rapid charger for faster top-ups on longer journeys. Electric vehicles do not have petrol engines, so the cars are powered purely by electricity. If we compare the charging options for standard hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and electric vehicles, we see that the hybrids both use their petrol engines to charge the battery, and all three vehicle types make use of regenerative braking to boost their battery charge. The two plug-in variants can also be recharged from a charge point or, if needs be, a domestic power socket. This reveals something important about standard hybrids, which after 20 years on the market were recently rebranded as self-charging by some car manufacturers. If the definition of self-charging is using the petrol engine or regenerative braking to charge the battery, then plug-in hybrids self-charge in the exact same way as standard hybrids, but with the additional option to charge using a home or public charge point which can markedly reduce running costs and the emissions of the vehicle. Electric vehicles also self-charge using regenerative braking, making much better use of it thanks to their big batteries, and have vastly reduced running costs since they are powered entirely by electricity. Plus, they have no exhaust emissions and are the only option out of the three vehicles that can theoretically run entirely on renewable energy, which is perfect if you have solar panels at home or a renewable energy electricity tariff. Therefore, if standard hybrids are self-charging, then so are plug-in hybrids and electric vehicles. Another possible definition of the self-charging hybrid is a vehicle that charges its traction battery without any interaction from the driver whatsoever. Some people who have bought standard hybrids, or are considering buying one, have been led to believe that this is what the vehicle is capable of doing. Let's explore the truth behind this marketing message by examining what happens to each type of vehicle when it runs out of charge. For all three vehicles, regenerative braking will not be an option because the battery is completely flat, so the vehicle can't get moving to generate momentum that would be turned back into electrical energy under regenerative braking. For the electric vehicle, the battery is charged using a charge point, or if needs be, a domestic power socket. Not only will this likely give the owner a full charge by the time they've finished working, sleeping, shopping, etc., but if the electricity used to charge the car comes from clean sources, then all of the energy used to power this car is clean and low carbon. The plug-in hybrid's battery can also be charged using a charge point, and as with an electric vehicle, this can be done using renewable energy. 
Alternatively, the plug-in hybrid will fire up its petrol engine, which will act as an onboard generator to fill up the battery with dirty electricity derived from petrol. The standard, or self-charging hybrid, has no option to plug in, so the only way it can charge its battery is via the petrol engine, which tops up the battery with dirty electricity from fossil fuels. However, the petrol engine is fueled by petrol from the fuel tank, and when that runs out, the car can't self-charge itself. It needs to be filled up with more petrol. In fact, the only way that a standard hybrid can self-charge is if it is airlifted to the top of a mountain and given a push off the top, using regenerative braking to charge the battery on the way back down. This same trick could be performed by a plug-in hybrid or an electric vehicle, but both of those could plug in anywhere, so why would they bother? The moral of this story is if you leave a standard hybrid parked up with a flat battery and an empty petrol tank, it will not self-charge. The car will need to be filled up with petrol in order to move. Another important consideration is fuel and running costs. Remember that a standard hybrid does not have the option to plug in and make use of off-peak or renewable electricity. On the motorway, the vehicle is travelling at a pretty constant speed, so the battery is not charged using regenerative braking. This means that the petrol engine does all of the work, so the fuel economy of the vehicle tanks. As such, standard hybrids tend to have underwhelming fuel economy on motorway journeys. In urban areas, stop-start traffic means that standard hybrids make a lot of use of regenerative braking, so their fuel economy improves significantly. But, then again, electric vehicles also make strong use of regenerative braking in urban areas, and their range vastly increases around town whilst providing markedly cheaper running costs. A perfect example of this is when I switched from my Mark 1 Honda Insight, a tiny, two-seater, 20-year-old standard hybrid which is more efficient than modern hybrids, to a Mark 1 Nissan Leaf electric car. I ended up saving £800 per year in fuel and maintenance, which is no surprise since not only is electricity much cheaper than petrol, but electric cars are much more mechanically simplistic and therefore far less likely to break and much cheaper to maintain. When comparing an electric car to a modern 5-seater standard hybrid, factor in the lower fuel economy of the latter versus the Insight, and also the healthy tax savings for an electric vehicle versus a brand new standard hybrid, including £0 vehicle excise duty or road tax for electric vehicles, and 0% benefit in kind for pure electric company cars. So, while standard hybrids may have improved fuel economy around town, they're still hundreds, if not thousands of pounds per year more expensive to run than an electric vehicle, which thrives in urban environments and is more than capable of cross-country journeys. A plug-in hybrid sits somewhere between a standard hybrid and an electric vehicle in the previous comparison, but has an electric-only range of typically around 20 miles per charge. In comparison, most electric vehicles on the market now have a range of over 200 miles per charge, with only a handful of niche examples having a range of less than 120 miles. Plug-in hybrid owners quickly grow fond of the electric-only capability of their vehicle and wish that they had a car with a bigger battery, for more range coupled with rapid charging capability. It's therefore no surprise that many plug-in hybrid owners buy an electric car as their next car. In conclusion, plug-in hybrids self-charge in the exact same way as standard or so-called self-charging hybrids and electric vehicles also self-charge using regenerative braking, just like standard hybrids. Furthermore, a self-charging hybrid derives all of its energy from petrol, and will need to be filled up with petrol to keep charging the battery, otherwise it will simply grind to a halt. So there we have it, a standard or self-charging hybrid actually doesn't self-charge in any different way whatsoever to a plug-in hybrid, which can also be plugged in, which can take advantage of cheap or renewable electricity. And on top of that, even electric vehicles can self-charge using regenerative braking. If any advert or salesperson has led you to believe that a standard hybrid can somehow self-charge without being filled with petrol, hopefully now this episode has made it much clearer that that is not the case. A standard hybrid is fundamentally a 100% petrol-powered car, it requires petrol to drive the engine, which gets the car up to speed, and it's only then that regenerative braking can be used to charge the battery, or the petrol engine itself as an onboard generator. But to get that momentum going, required petrol in the first place. It is a 100% petrol-powered car. There we go, I hope that's made things clearer. Thanks for your time, and see you again soon for another episode of Plug Life Television.